Right, well, good morning everybody. Once again, welcome back to the plot. I'm starting off down home today, as I promised last week. It's, uh, I think the first job I want to do is to get um, get a few of my chilies planted up in the final pots. I'm just uh, slowly but surely starting to empty the greenhouse out and get everything up the, up the plot where it belongs. Uh, most of the tomatoes are now finished, all potted up and away up there. Uh, we've got quite a few planted out in the uh, in the bottom polytunnel. Been a bit um, hitty messy the last couple of days because it's been freezing cold of a month, so I'm just hoping that the frost hasn't uh, affected them too much. So I looked at a couple of them yesterday and they were looking a little bit a uh, little bit bluish, but um, we've got plenty more. I've got uh, I've got a couple of dozen put to one side just for just for spares that I keep in the melon house uh, inside the big tunnel, which is uh, nice and uh, nice and warm in the evening. Even it doesn't drop below 40, 45, so I'm well chuffed for that. Uh, a lot of people have been experiencing the, um, the frost, they've lost taties and dahlias and that, and that's why I never plant my dahlias out until um, uh, until at least the end of May, beginning of June, and uh, they're quite happy just sitting on the back border there now, I'm over the moon with them. As I say, I'm down home at the moment, I've, um, if you've been watching my Facebook page, I've, uh, I've been, been doing plenty of work in the back here, getting tidied up. and. What I did have, I had an old bit of pole that's been lying at the back of my greenhouse for about five years now, so I thought, oh well, uh, well getting all the furniture painted up, all my garden furniture, and of course I've got plenty of bird feeders around the um, around the sides of the garden, but unfortunately the birds were uh, pulling on the furniture, so what I decided to do was to put the pole in the middle, make a totem pole. As you see, I've got the feeders here, and um, it's absolutely fantastic, the birds love it, blue tits. Got a pair of robins here come most daily. The blackbirds love it. Uh, we've got magpies up a height in the trees behind it. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's a little wildlife haven behind us, and we we love it. I just set my video off uh, before going to the greenhouse, so hopefully I might have uh, caught sight of the um, of the blackbird hen. She's normally down now picking at the uh, picking at the poles, but we'll give it a couple of minutes. She might uh, she might make an appearance. Probably fun first, and the uh, the colic spray last. And 
uh, you shouldn't have any problems with your, with your prospects. I was still fat, the cabbages out for me Saturday. I did what I did last night when I went up. I got all the leaks out. The leaks have been hard enough for about three or four weeks now up there on the back benches. Uh, so I placed them all out, Roger. I'll probably planting them out this morning. And then uh, hopefully next week, what I want to do is just start making me travels again because uh, <coughs> <coughs> starting to go back around the stables and get the horse manure. I will be digging up the first of the um, the first of the early taties this weekend. <coughs> so we'll see what the Amalek and Chazzy and of course that'll create a bit of space in the bottom polytunnel, in the big polytunnel, sorry. But what I want to do this weekend if I can is to lift the lift the skirts we call them and just leave the net on the bottoms. So that way the fresh air is going to be blown straight through. And then of course we'll get the land cleared of the taties, get it manured, limed if needed. And I will check the numbers, see what I like, um, and then we'll plant the sweet corn. I'm going to plant some croissants into that land, uh, some sweet corn. I've got some um, some courgettes in there that I want to try out. Some are holding their core, some little yellow poles. So I'm going to plant some of them out and see how they grow. Uh, lots of things to try this year, but um, we'll see how it goes anyway. And of course, no joy on the, uh, on the bird yet, but there. Uh, no doubt we'll catch on one of these days. But there for the time being, I'll shut the camera down and we'll get myself in the, in the greenhouse and get some of these peppers planted up. Okay? Only waited two days to get, get that shut. That's at the uh, Blackbird Hen, she's been uh, coming here for the last two or three days now that we've been hanging new balls out on the um, fat balls, out on the new uh, totem pole. It's absolutely fantastic, as I keep saying. Bring the birds down to your garden and they'll, they'll look after you. Feed them and they'll certainly keep your, your garden pest free. All the maggots and snails and uh, creepy crawlies up when I get around your your beds and your flowers. They'll, uh, they'll certainly keep the keep the beasties down. But uh, yeah, I'm over the moon with that. Right, okay. Let's get into that greenhouse and get started on these peppers. And okay, right. Well, let's see. Evening time here, and I'm in the northeast. Just ten six o'clock. I managed to get myself a little scrub down. Uh, it's been absolutely baking this afternoon, but that wind's still freezing cold. Off the northeast coast, I think at times it's uh, it's pretty um, it's pretty handy for us because when it's blown in from the coast, it's got that salt in. It's not too far from the coast when you cut a mile, so we've got a bit salty in it, and I think that's why we're we're pretty well frost clear for the last couple of months. It has been cold, really cold, but uh, I don't know. Uh, touch wood, we haven't lost anything. So I think my final job today before I get up the plot tomorrow is to get them. Um, get a couple of these chilies out of the way. Uh, now I did mention in the last video I like topping them. Um, and this is my own strain. This is the uh, this is a straight pepper one. It's a uh, orange and red pepper. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, they're just at the right size now for topping. It's uh, for me anyway. I've got two, four, six, I've got eight sets of leaves here. So we'll move them that. And of course what I do need to find them is your the glasses. Good shot here, it says. 
and then just go into the by the top leaves and sometimes it's easier said than done just get onto the node there and chop mode nice and clean that's it and that, there's them two sets of leaves there still left now what's going to happen now is the leaf nodes are going to start the growth from there and you're going to end up with a nice bush a nice short bush um, and not too big as I say I've only got uh, I've only got a three foot headroom in here so I don't need a big plant I want a small plant but bushy and have to carry a few fruits on as I mentioned we put nice deep ones nine inch ones eight nine inch pot fine because what I use with mine as I've showed you before drip trays you can put a bit of gravel in the bottom or a bit of sand in the bottom if you want I think just the, the tree on its own is fine uh, so the, the pot itself, I fill it up to the level that I want, check with your pot, make sure it's the right, right depth, pre-soak it, I always like to do this with me when I'm transplanting everything, anything, I always like to pre-soak the soil, it's my own mixture, it's my own pot mixture from the allotment, it's a three tone one mixture, uh, plenty of grit in it, plenty of sand in it, so it's, um, it's well free draining, and uh, well the rest is easy after that, it's getting you plant out and that's fantastic at all the moment that lovely white root system first class get into the centre of the pot I'll just put that label on side for the time being a couple of good handfuls of pot mix around the plant still leaving a good inch for a top dressing later on if need be um, as I say, I'm not bothered about water from the top, I never do anyway. Um, so that's me, that's me chilli done. It's been topped. There's my tray. Sit in my tray there now. That's spot on. I'm over the moment with that. That's one done. I've got another rare uh, nine to do with what I'm just there. Uh, take my time. Plot on, get these done. Will be a short cane goes in there. Because I'm surmising that's going to grow up another five or six inches and then the main side shoots are going to come out so you'll probably end up with a plant two and a half to three foot tall hopefully as I've got about four foot headroom here three, three and a half to four foot so they should be just perfect for here um, but I've also got down here some alicante uh, why I've at this size because I timed them just for getting this greenhouse cleared out I've still got bits of stuff lying around that I need to get out the chilies, peppers, uh, the new cows just I mentioned. That's um well, they always stop in here. They uh, they don't go anywhere near the, the allotment just yet because it's still a little bit cold up there. Uh, cucumbers. I've just I've just started off plenty of cucumbers. These are La Diva. I've got the uh, the telegraph which are a little bit hardier up the plot. And then I've got the uh, money maker down here. Nice small money maker. So I've uh, I've got plenty to choose from. I can put there. Uh, Three alicante, a three money maker either side, and that, that's fine for us because we've got absolutely hundreds up the garden. I'm well chuffed for that. Um, so that's that done. Um, what I will be doing, or what I should have done this afternoon, was make a mix up, but I will do that tomorrow for, and we'll get up the plot. Um, we love peppers, and the green fly loves them also. Green fly, white fly, they're one of the main pests for you. Uh, for your peppers and your chilies. So what I like to do is just give them a good spray early on. Uh, give them a cut. Uh, give them a garlic spray. I can do it with a um, with the one I normally use, uh, which is soapy water, Epsom salts, uh, a bit of baking baking powder in. But I will do one of them mixtures uh, tonight or tomorrow morning, and I'll take up the plot. I'll do all the chilies and peppers up there, and I'll also do these ones down here. But uh, love them on that. So that's it for the day. Um, Melons will grow away fine. These are my melons that's going at the Three Sisters Challenge. Uh, so it's the melons done. The sweet corn I've just potted up the night. I will be sowing my broad beans, uh, my, my peas and my beans next week. So that'll give them a chance to just to break surface and get a decent sized plant ready for them and plant the sweet corn out. Now these courgettes, I'm thinking of planting them out along with the sweet corn also. See how they grow. So, you know, I've got a multitude of different things I can swap around with but we'll, we'll see how it goes anyway for the time being I'm going to knock off get my hands washed again get back upstairs and have myself a nice quiet night but uh, no doubt 
I'll see you up the plot tomorrow and we'll get stuck on these brass guys. OK, bye for now. Right, well, good morning everybody. Once again, I'm, uh, I'm down home. I'm hoping to get up and get this video finished today. Um, I went up the plot yesterday afternoon and, uh, and of course I forgot the camera. But I didn't forget it, the wind was really strong. So I thought, it's a waste of time going up there and trying to finish off the video. Um, because what I want to do at the end of the, is show you the grapevine because in next week's video I'm going to tackle two of the grapevines, that's the ones in the bottom tut in the big tunnel, get them cut right back and have a look at the peach tree. But uh, before I want to do that I want to finish off the brassicas today. Um been loads of comments online the last couple of nights I've been watching and uh, a lot of confusion about the sprays that I use. Um, I use a chamomile tea at the beginning of the year. Or seedlings, always use it. It's easy enough to get, you can get it dried or you can get just the tea bags like I do. I get the tea bags from the health shop, uh, soak a tea bag in a, a litre of water, boiling water, let it cool down, put it in your spray, and a little bit of washing up liquid. Now, this is where the confusion comes in. There's a lot of people say that uh, adding a washing up liquid it's chemical, it's, it's a little bit, it's a tiny amount. And the only reason I do this for the spray I'm making today with the baking powder, um, it'll kill your pests and it'll also keep them clean of um, things like mildew, fungi and also with a washing up liquid, what it is, I've just made this up this morning and I'll just take you step by step um, and it's the same with the garlic spray, it's exactly the same when I make my garlic spray up, uh, I boil it down nice and mushy mash it well up and drain off what fluid you've got and then I just mix that in a litre spray, that's all you want, a litre spray once again add no washing up liquid uh, what the washing up, now, now some of the people um, like to use um, olive oil, I do, I put olive oil in here, I put a teaspoon of olive oil but the last thing I do is I put a teaspoon of Epsom salts in and then the washing up liquid with the hot water and what the washing up liquid does, it emulsifies and it makes everything bind together. And there we have it. If you just put olive oil in there in hot water, what the olive oil do, it just sits on top of the water. And you find it very hard to dilute into your spray bottle. So a little bit of washing up liquid with it. It's not going to harm it. A little bit of washing up liquid. Mix in and it just binds everything together. And then with this, all I do is top it up. into the spray bottle and that's spot on there we have it so what we have in here we've got we have two drops of washing up with it one teaspoon of baking, baking soda one, one teaspoon of cooking oil and one teaspoon of Epsom salts Once you put this under pressure, put your spray under pressure with a pumping action, what you're doing is you're mixing the water up and we're having the soap in, it's all going to mix up inside and it, uh, it creates a fantastic spray. Not only, as I say, not only is it going to kill your green fly aphids, because what the washing up liquid do, it gets into the gills and it stops them breathing. It's an eco-friendly way, I think, of, uh, of killing the bugs. And there we have it. Don't forget, let that cool down first. I'm just there uh, spraying over here to release some of the pressure. And as I say, once you start moving that around, and that is a fantastic spray for everything. You can use it on anything. Now the rhubarb spray, um, I brought some rhubarb down yesterday. If you're watching the Facebook page last night, I posted on. Uh, I brought a load of rhubarb down in, of course. Majority of it goes into there. Good old rhubarb crumble or a nice rhubarb pie. But the leaves, I like the, I like to keep the leaves. For the brassicas, what I do is I'll, I'll sweat the leaves down in the greenhouse so that can get nice and soft. And then, once the brassicas are ready, I'll show you this afternoon. If the wind drops, we'll get up and finish this video for this afternoon. And what I like to do, because I've sown mine, me, me, um, me cabbages in multi-pots, in, in single pots, you take them out of the pot and you've got a nice whole root ball. And that, in itself, 
gives you a little bit of protection. If you if you have problems with current root fly, uh, with um, cabbage root fly, before they attack it, that big solid root system that you're planting in the ground has got a better chance of getting a hold before it does any damage. And it's the same with the club root. But as well as that, what I like to do is I like to get, take the root bob leaf and just wrap around the um, the root of the plant and bury it whole. And then, once again, I go across with me here uh, and make the the garlic, garlic juice up in the water can and give it a really good soak of that. And that's giving you a double protection from the, the, the root fly and from the club root. But I'll show you that stuff in a moment with the pot. But for the rhubarb, when you save the, the leaves, what you can do, we can bring the leaves down home. Now, if you go back in some of my videos, you'll find it. It's um, it's one of the pest ones, uh, bugs. And I, I showed you how to make the rhubarb bear juice on here. It's an easy thing to do. You just take a couple of leaves, um, two or three leaves, chop them up, put them in a pan of water, um, two liters of water, or two pints of water, that's fine. And by the time you boil it down, you should be you should be down to about a pint left. So strain that off and really strain it fine, man, because with the rhubarb, you can get very thin pieces of, of leaf in that mixed in with it, and it just makes the spray harder to, to spray. But if you just, if you strain it well, you use a coffee um, grinders, anything like that, um, just a bit of old muslin cloth, give it a really good straining, get the juice off it, and then mix that 9 to 1. Now, we've got to be very careful with the rhubarb leaves, because it is a poison. I keep telling people that. Just got to be very careful with it, but it's fantastic for killing the aphids and all the other creepy crawly bugs. Um, once again, mix it in about nine to one, even ten to one, a little bit weaker. Put in a litre bottle or a big bottle or a watering can. I think I do. I put it in a watering can, and you can give everything a good wash with that. Once again, I just soapy liquid because what your soapy liquid's doing. Once again, it's mixing. It's mixing the uh, the rhubarb juice with your water. Because sometimes you've got heavy elements in the sit, like your oils, your oils will float. Um, your rhubarb juice might sink to the bottom. Whereas if you add your soap and you're washing up liquid, it binds everything together. So you get a first class mixture by spraying on your plants. So I hope I've, um, I've gotten over a few of the myths about people um, preferring this and preferring that. You can use uh, cooking oil just the same. Olive oil, I like a couple of drops of olive oil. But also, don't forget to use your washing up liquid because that binds everything together. And I don't think it's, you know, um, I don't think it's a, it's much on the side of chemicals or pesticides. Um, all it's doing is just helping mix that water together and bind everything together and make sure that uh, you get the best protection for your crops. So I thought I've, uh, I thought I've cleared that little bit of uh, uh, message up. I know people keep saying that they prefer to use the oil. It does help, um, it does help the, the juice stick to the plants. That's the whole idea of it. Um, it, uh, it binds it to the plants, but as I say, in equal quantities, and if you just add that little bit of soap, what it does, it binds a whole lot together, all your, all your flows in one go, where's that spray going, there it is there, so everything's in there now, and it's uh, it's well mixed, and the soap's doing its trick, not only is it binding it together, but like I say, especially with aphids, black fly, green fly, once the soap gets on the old gills, and it chokes our gills up, great stuff, but uh, this is fantastic, Epsom salts and it's great for your peppers. As I say, peppers, um, we love them. Peppers and chilies, but so do the green fly. And uh, that's one of the main things in the uh, in the greenhouses throughout the year, is to keep checking on these. Now these are mine. Um, what I'm planning on doing these, I've already done two, if you can see these here. I've done two last week. And I, uh, they're up and smashing. I've already topped them, and already, the little side shoots are romping away there. And that's only been, I think that's only been there uh, three or four days. There we are. And the little side shoots are romping away. So I'm looking forward to some nice bushes on there. I've still got my tomatoes to plant out in here. And I've still got me, me the rest of my peppers to plant up down here. As I say, I've been really busy the last couple of days trying to get everything done up the plot. I've managed to get carrots in. Uh, I've managed to get the parsnips in. Uh, I'm going to try and get some beetroot in this week. I've done the sprouts yesterday, and I've got, what I've got to do this afternoon is plant the cabbages. But I'll show you exactly the same way as I do with the sprouts. Roll the leaves, round the root, plant them nice and firm. And of course, don't forget in that, keep the old butterflies out. But once you get the butterflies in and they start laying the eggs, the, um, the garlic spray is the best thing for that. 
garlic spray, hot water, garlic spray, plenty of soap, let it cool down, and then give them a good wash for that. And that's uh, that's more or less a, um, a preventive spray rather than a killer. But at the same time, if it's safe as that's on there, the soap will do exactly the same thing as this was. The soap will get into that gills and it'll kill them. But putting that garlic on the plant, it just leaves a full taste in the legs of caterpillars and that. So hopefully you should get a, a bit of them, a bit of relief from them. But as I say, if you don't want to make the sprays up, then by all means get a net. And it'll keep the big gear, uh, the flying rats away, the wood pigeons. Because they're, they're horrendous at round opens. There's plenty of them up there. As I say, I don't mind the birds down at the garden, but when you when you poke two or three these perfect rows of cabbage and brassica, and the wood pigeons come down and devour them overnight, and then let's say it's a no-no for me, so I like to rely on my sprays. But I hope I've cleared up a few little myths here. As I say, when you're making your sprays up, don't forget to use your washing up liquid. Let's say it's a lesser of two evils, I always say. Just a couple of drops of washing up liquid, and it just helps everything bind together in your mixture. This is what I like to use, just a little jug like this. I put a couple of couple of inches of boiling water in there and I mix everything in boiling water so it all goes down nice and soft. Put your, even on boiling water, you put your, your cooking oil in, you see a cooking oil floating on the top. Put your, uh, your baking soda and your Epsom salt, and it's still floating on the top. And you're washing up liquid, stir it up, and there you go, it's all mixed in perfect. Ready to form the other water. Now that's going to be stand here for another half an hour before it cools down, and then I'll give all my peppers and chilies a good spray with that. Fantastic. And I might even give the melons a blast before I take them up the allotment. They've grown away really well, and these are going to be for the Three Sisters Challenge. These are little baby bush melons. I sent a few people them seeds up, so I hope you're doing as well as well. These are. They've grown away really great. Just waiting for the roots to get the bottom of the pots, and I'll probably have to pot them up again because they don't want to be planting them out until the middle of June. It's still freezing cold here in the northeast. The wind is absolutely bitter coming off the sea there. It's from the north, but when it sweeps on to the east, comes off the north sea, it's absolutely freezing. So I'm not in a hurry to get anything planted out yet. The aliens are all sitting up there on the back beds. They're sheltered up a height, keeping any frost off them, because we still had two or three frosts last week. People losing plants left, right and centre. I just keep seeing them. You know, just. There's loads of time. You're only in the middle of May. Just take your time. There's no hurry to get things planted out. I've got a tree of lettuce here. I must take them up and get them potted off. They're a little bit dry there. Even down here, it's um, cold greenhouse. I've got a little bit of sunshine on there and it's 86 in here. But that's where the door should. Normally I have the door wide open. But with the wind, it's going to distort the air, the volume again. Um, but what I will do is, I see, I'll get up the plot this afternoon. We'll get these brassicas in and I'll show you how to plant them and then I'll give you a little look at the grapevines where I've tended out the back end for the new video for next week. But for the time being, I'm going to get myself a cuppa and then we'll get up the plot this afternoon. Okay, see you all again soon. Okay, alright, well we've managed to get up here this afternoon. It's uh, just turned 4 o'clock here in the northeast and at least the wind's starting to die down a little bit. Uh, I'm well chuffed for that, so I've made a decision to come up and get this video finished off. Well, this is a job I was busy with yesterday. Uh, I've got all the hoops put in last week and all the stakes put in, getting the bed prepared. In the front of the on the front of this bed here, I've got two rows of parsnips. So I've got all my winter stuff in one bed. I've got uh, the parsnips and the sprouts, which will last right through until next March. Um, what I did, I hooped, hooped the whole bed. And, of course, I've got me red netting. One side's finished off. And this side here, I've just had to give them a good water today, and I'll be pulling the rest of the netting down <coughs> and putting some electrician's tyres at the bottom of the at the bottom of the hoops, and that'll keep the mesh nice and tight for the next couple of weeks. <coughs> Excuse me, it's been well weeded out. So once I get the uh, tyres on the bottom down here, I'll not need to shift this for at least another month. Uh, we can water through the mesh, and it's going to be at least three to four weeks before we have to weed it. By then, all I have to do is cut the tyres, yeah, pull the net back up, give it a good weed note, and if, if need be, pull the net back down and put the tyres on again. I like to leave my sprouts until I get a good foot tall, nice and strong, before before I leave the net free. By that time, the wood, the wood pigeons won't touch them. Of course, then the only other problem is you've got is the butterflies, if you want to let the butterflies in and start laying eggs. But uh, that's where my... Um, that's where my sprays come in handy when I start using the uh, the garlic sprays on 
So I'll be doing a garlic wash today, as I say. Um, that's a sprout in. We just turn around this this bed I'm busy on at the moment. And uh, here we've got the um, we've got what cabbages ready to go in. Summer cabbages. There's uh, two types here. There's a Duncan, and of course there's a Fildacrout, which is a big German cabbage. If you like big cabbages and you've got plenty of spare land, well that's that's a cabbage you ought, ought to be using. Well, just a few little tips when planting out here. Um, as I mentioned, I always take the once my cabbages are through, I can throw them into individual pots, just top pipe cups, and uh, they grow up really great in these. And the idea being to get yourself a nice, get yourself a lovely big root system, individual root system. And that way, by planting them out this way, they're giving them a better chance of growing. If you have got any disease in the soil, like a club root, um, you've got more, much better chance of getting a getting a hold in the soil before the disease takes hold. Um, but another you know, little trick I like to use, of course if you watched my Facebook page last night, um, I was commenting on it, I took a little move up down last night for family and friends, and of course we we loved it. The, the wife made a lovely rhubarb cumber, as you do, a nice rhubarb pie. I take some of the leaves down home, we're chopping up, was it, which I've mentioned, eating there. Uh, just three or four leaves, chop up in a pan of water, two liters of water, boil down for about 20 minutes on the simmer. Once you get it boiling, just turn it down, let it simmer for about 20 minutes, and then let it cool off, spray it, put it through a distill, through a, through a strainer, and uh, you get a lovely juice, and that'll, that'll work wonders for uh, where it sprays later on. So I like to make cabbages a good foot spacing. Nice deep hole, it's pretty dry today, we haven't had any rain up here in the northeast for weeks. We've had a couple of little drops and drizzles through the night, but nothing. So I'm going to have to get these a real good soak. But uh, if you have got club root, then this is a, it's a perfect opportunity to use up your rhubarb leaves. Yeah, just like you were doing a kebab. Wrap the root in your rhubarb leaf. Plant them well down. Firm it in. Even you can go around with your foot. <sighs> Once you get the whole row in. Nice and firm. And that way it stops the wind from blowing them around. And they get there, they get themselves established much easier. Give them a good watering in, and then I'll pull, I've got some uh, salmon nets here. I'll be pulling down just for the night until I get the whole bed cleared. Um, two rows to do in here tonight, and then in the front row. I've got um, I've got some beetroot up in tomorrow night, so I'll be doing that. And that'll be this bed finished, and that can get the, the net tightened up. Roger will come up and give us a hand with that. We'll tighten the net up both sides, put the tires on, and then we can just leave it. As I say, we can get the hose and water through here any time we want. And uh, we'll not have to take it, the tires off <coughs> for at least another month. When, uh, when by then, I'll just need a, a light weeding out. So I'll just do this one before I rear. Uh, before we go inside, I like to pull off any dead leaves on the bottom, just get some out of the way. And there again, you've got a first cross root there. Great root system. And all you want, just pull the. What I like to do with my rhubarb is the day before, before I'm using it, uh, pull the rhubarb up and put the leaves in the greenhouse where it's nice and warm, and it just go nice and soft and pliable, sweaty, and then all you have to do. You can take the big heavy stalks out, and all you have to do is just wrap it. It's just like a, just like a key bag, a little, little tea bag. Get it in there, nice and deep. Well down, the soil around. And really press it in, nice and firm. When I get this roll finished tonight, I'll be over the moon. But uh, before I knock off, I just want to show you what's in store for next week. <laughs> well, I'm talking about next week, we'll start the new week. I'm a little bit late in the video, of course. With the weather being like it is, the last four days up here, it's been absolutely blowing a gale. And of course, uh, a few comments on last, on the last week's videos of, um, of Bev about the, the racket. You don't really realise until you get home and you start watching the uh, watching the playback as it does. When the polythene's flopping inside, it's a, it can be a real headache. But, uh, that's why I decided to come up tonight and get the video finished off. Hopefully the wind will not pick up tonight.
example there. Uh, I'll show you what's in store for next week, okay? Oh, right, we're back inside now, and of course it's absolutely sweating, melting in here. Even though the wind's blowing outside and uh, it's a bit dull, it's absolutely clammy. So it's, uh, I'm not going to stop in this tunnel for too long. What me and Roger did start on, on Sunday, is uh, on Saturday afternoon I should say, sorry, we, uh, we dug up the first of the early teas, the Jazzy, and uh, they were absolutely fantastic. But what I want to do is to get this little area here cleared because I want to plant some chrysanthemum here. And as I said in the last video, if you look over the far side where the, uh, the polythene comes right down the ground, that's going to be lifted this weekend. We'll lift the polythene right up, we call it a skirt, and behind there is just net. And so these will, right along the side of the tunnel, will be wide open. And just, just with the net on, letting the fresh air through. And that's where I went wrong on part of my sweet corn last year. It was just far too hot for them. Yeah. We've got a decent enough crop, but not as good as what I, what I usually have. So, lessons learned, this year the skirt will come up and the, uh, the sweet corn will get plenty of fresh air blown through. They're not ready for planting yet. I'm, go I'm looking forward to around about the, uh, the first, second week in June before I start planting them. Same as the melons. And then this weekend, in the next video, I'm going to put some beans away. Some uh, runner beans to go alongside the, uh, to along go alongside the sweet corn. So, that was our first job. Get them few out. We'll get this border cleared. And I'll get some nice croissants put in there. I want some uh, some nice early flowers for the wife this year. Um, now, Bev and Roy Riddle from Wolverhampton. Hi Bev. Uh, well, this is a chance. I'm going to show you what's in store for next week. Uh, the grapevines. I'm glad you're still enjoying the videos. Uh, it's nice to hear from you. You'll always get a, some nice comments from you. So, this one's uh, all about the fruit trees. And turn it, I've got two black grapes here, one in each corner here. Uh, they're only second year rods, but um, now's the time to start spending just a little bit extra time on them. And uh, the more time you spend on them now, the better they'll be. As you can see, they're a little bit of a mess at the moment. There's, uh, there's parts coming out all over the shop, and I'm going to have me, me cut one there for a moment. Now, this is my main leader here, it's just at the end. As you can see, there's the old rod there. That's the end of the old rod. Just there, you can tell by the brown wood. That's where I cut it back last year. Well, this is a new one. This is a new rod, and that'll be the main rod. I'll run right along the far end of this tunnel here. And when I see a rod, it's a single rod I use. By the end of this summer, this will probably be about next to, next to six foot long here. And what we'll do at the end of the year, we'll take it back to the, the weakest point, where it's just thin growth, and we'll stop it there, just by a, a bud, by a leaf. We'll, we'll cut it there, set it as, and then that'll grow on again next year, and the year, and the year after. So it just carries on all the way along. Now that single rod will stop in position, and what will happen is, where the leaves are, each year, you'll get side shoots coming out, which is what these are here. If you look down the main rod here, you can see the side shoots coming out. And what we normally do is we'll cut the side shoots back to one leaf. So you've always got somewhere for the new growth to come from. So what I'll be doing with these side shoots here, if you look there, there's two bunches of grapes there, just on this one side shoot. So what I'll do, I'll cut this rod back to one leaf, past the bunch of grapes. There's two on there, so I'm going to take one bunch off, and then I'll work my way up. There's another side shoot there with two bunches of grapes on, which is far too much, especially for only a second year rod. Now if I go on either side, there's, there's actually the stems all over here. There's one there, two lovely ones there, and they're all carrying grapes. So to me that's far too much for a plant this size and this early. What I like to do is concentrate on the framework. Get a framework built up, but I will take some fruit off it this year, but not as many as what's on there now. So when I start the video off at the end of this week, we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll get one second as, or scissors, whatever you want to use. Nice and sharp. A spray. I've just made a spray up uh, this morning. What, what I showed you in the video. That'll come up. I've got uh, melons, cucumbers, everything in there. Especially the cucumbers. Because if you've ever suffered from mildew, that spray I made up this morning is perfect for it. We'll give it a good spray of that. <coughs> Another thing, the garlic, which is a, I forgot to mention before. When I put the cabbages out, 
give them a good garlic wash and that sets them up smashing for any um, cabbage root fly that's knocking around give them a good good wash all over around the roots really soaking it in and there uh, that'll protect them but there uh, as I say back into the grapes what we'll do is we'll cut all this back but we'll leave we'll leave around about four maybe six bunches and these are black grapes I've never grown these before um, so I want to see how they come see what bunches are like and I'll be doing a lot of pruning on the bunches but that will not be till late summer but for the time being what I want to do is get them nicely trimmed up and the reason for getting these potatoes out of this pot here was so I can get into these two great pines here and really see what sort what sort of framework there is now if you wanted to if, you, if your great pines against a wall or a trellis or a fence with some of these side shoots you can actually use them to build up a frame as you would an apple tree or a peach tree like my peach tree up there and um, that's only second year and already it's got fruit on I've built it up into a frame <coughs> um, a fan shape and you can do exactly the same with a grapevine you can, you can keep them side shoots um, you can turn it into a fan and then what will happen with these side shoots next year all the side shoots will give off side shoots so you'll, you've got double the amount of fruit but as I say it's not all about the fruit it's about building up your building your framework up first um, I just like to keep a single rod that's just one straight rod same as it tomorrow up and down along the top and I, I'll get enough grapes from there but if you wanted to build a fan shape quite easy to do uh, it just means opening your side shoots the best ones you want there's a lovely one there that's your main runner so you don't want to you don't want to do anything with that. There's another one there, so you could have a lovely fan shape. And then two up there, one there, one there. You could have a lovely fan shape built up and just cut the excess shoots out. But we'll do that on there, possibly Thursday or Friday, for the video for next week. Ooh, so that's it. I'm going to get myself away back outside and get there. Get these cabbages finished off. And I'll give them a good garlic wash. I'll put some garlic up. Boil it down the pan in the garage, not in the, not in the house. I'm not that brave. I know uh, Julian boils this in the house and he gets away with it. Lucky fella, hark on it. The wife hates the smell of it. So I'll boil mine down the garage. Get it nice and soft, really mushy. Give it a good stirring up. Just keep it on a low boil. Once it's boiling, just keep it on a low boil for 20 minutes. Get it nice and soft and mushy. <coughs> Strain that off. It's a fantastic juice, and that's what I'll be doing. Go back outside now, where it's a bit cooler, and I'll give them cabbages a good wash of the garlic juice, and that'll set them up fine. And maybe tomorrow I'll get the next row in. The beetle will say, No, put the net over, and that's that finished with. Another bed done. <coughs> We're getting there, slowly but surely. Roger's been planting some of the big leeks out. They're out. Uh, we've got some onions to go out soon. So I'll, uh, I'll maybe just tackle that at the end of this week, but uh, for the time being, I want to concentrate on all these boxes along here and this is where what what peppers, what chilies and uh, what melons are going it's stacks of work still to be done but uh, we'll include that in the next video um, and we'll show you how we're getting on in this, in this point on here but uh, as I say I've got to finish them cabbages off and I've got a load of water to do that's my main job the night, I come up water down and it could take me an hour easy just to go from the main greenhouse through both the polytunnels and all the side bend plants and everything that's outside. I've all got me water, so I'm going to get stuck in now. But anyway, thanks for all your comments. Um, loads of interest in the sprays, as I say on the, online. Uh, the last couple of nights, loads of people uh, commenting. But um, as I say, sprays are easy to make up. And uh, if you like us, if you want to be uh, organic, go the same way what we do. And uh, we never have, very rarely we have any heavy infestations of, uh, of aphids or bugs uh, we'll just keep it nice and clean let the birds bring the birds down to the garden apart from the wood pigeons we'll <laughs> try and keep them out whenever possible but let the birds do their business same my back garden the birds are in there all the time and of course if you get yourself on a nice big hairy caterpillar climbing around your flowers they're going to be straight down for it so that's the way to do it and of course they get little blue tits and that down there scurry scurrying around for bugs and aphids picking on them so, you know, that's the worthwhile thing to have in the garden. <coughs> but, uh, as I say, I'm going to knock off, knock this video off and go up and finish them cabbages off and get water down. But, uh, as I say, thanks for your comments again. Uh, if you can't wait for the video, 
jump on our Facebook page. It's uh, Jeff Owen on the Plot. You know where we are. And uh, send them a friend's request and we'll get you signed up and you can chat with the rest of the lads most nights. I'm on there most nights. Um, seeing what other people's up to. But uh, it's a great hobby and uh, it keeps us busy 24-7. 365 days a year, no problem, but we'll love it. Anyway, as I say, I'm going to knock off. Let's say once again, thanks for all the comments, and we'll uh, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, we should be all about the fruit trees. Bye for now.